In order to have successful relationships, the first thing we need to know is ourselves. Who are we? What is our nature? What is our inner mechanism? What makes us tick? Understanding ourselves will, of course, help us understand others, too. So let's get straight to it. Kabbalists explain that our nature, our inner mechanism, is simply a desire to feel maximum pleasure with minimum effort. That is what you can find at the very foundation of life, of everything you see around you. It's the formula of matter in nature. We all want to feel good, to experience pleasure. In relation to others, it means we want other people to love, respect, and value us. And we certainly don't want anything to be lacking or hurtful. This is the most basic law of our nature. Everyone has this inner mechanism. It can also be called our ego or our self. There are hundreds of different aspects and tendencies within ourselves, but in general, we can view our desire as a scale that runs from our most basic desires, the animalistic needs for food, sex, and family, and onwards to higher, more evolved desires, such as money, pride, respect, control over others, and knowledge. For each of us, these desires appear in different combinations and at different levels of intensity. It's actually what makes each of us a unique individual. Some people will be more in love with food, others will be more drawn towards money, while others will be much more drawn towards science and research. You see how each one of us has this unique makeup of desires. And what we're drawn to at a specific time isn't permanent. Our desires are constantly growing and evolving. Once we've fulfilled a certain goal, we quickly find that a new goal takes its place. Now, let's take a look at what happens in a relationship. Here, you have two people who are different from one another, each trying to be happy and fulfilled. Two different, constantly changing systems moving in different directions. So then how do these two entities connect and maintain a stable mutual path? If you can answer this question, you're already halfway to a higher connection. This is truly the source of all our relationship problems. We need to find a common source of pleasure around which we can come together and be as one. This is called the shared space that we need to learn how to create in our relationship. This shared space is really the center of our relationship and it's something that exists above all our other individual desires pulling us in different directions and above all the events and relationship dynamics we experience. This shared space can really only be created by a mutual desire for love and connection. Now, how can we develop this mutual desire? Here's where our self-awareness comes right back into the picture. We need to acknowledge that we are two egoists, each with his or her set of individual desires pulling us in different directions. This ego also comes with all kinds of impulses and tendencies, patterns we picked up throughout our lives. In fact, we're constantly bombarded by influences from our social environment and the media that surrounds us. And these very impulses are the result of the way we've been accustomed to think and behave to get what we want and feel that we need in our relationship. When our interests meet, we may feel that the relationship is flowing. But when they're not, we feel justified in demanding, criticizing, being judgmental, detached or insensitive. And that's what causes arguments and makes us see things differently. We can lash out at the other person simply because we're feeling empty. Becoming more aware of these impulses will allow us to begin to move in a new direction. Instead of our nature controlling us, we can begin to see it much more clearly and choose differently. Instead of allowing our anger, our disagreements and our differences to control us, we can rise above our automatic responses and choose to connect above it. We'll have an entire lesson on how to make that choice. But for now, I just want to make one thing clear. Having an ego, experiencing anger, judgment, even aggression, is not something to be embarrassed about. On the contrary, the more we talk about it with our partner 
expose our negative habits or traits and observe them together objectively is something completely natural. The more compassion we can have for ourselves, the more we can release a lot of the internal pressure that comes along with trying to hide what's happening within us from ourselves and others. And finally, we can choose differently. Because it really doesn't matter what patterns you or your partner have. You can fix anything you want if you have that awareness and also if you give each other good examples. If each person in the relationship shows the other an example of rising above anger, discord, and disagreement, and choosing connection and compassion, or kindness, empathy, we can transform our relationships. And just as importantly, we can give our kids that example. Let's face it, a lot of these impulses we have are things we picked up as children from our parents. Many of these patterns are later reinforced by films and videos we watch, even as adults. So this awareness and mutual effort to choose differently can prevent us from passing these patterns on to our children too. And it doesn't matter if we fail occasionally. It's the effort that we make at setting that example that has the greatest influence. And every time we succeed at going above our anger or judgment and choosing love and kindness, that will strengthen that shared space between us. All right, so let's review. In this lesson, we learned that our nature is a desire to receive pleasure. Each one of us has a unique set of ever-evolving desires we're constantly trying to satisfy, even unconsciously. We learn that we're driven by impulses and certain patterns that can cause a lot of anger, judgment, and separation in our relationships. We also learn that the first step to creating a good relationship is becoming aware of these impulses and of the patterns we've acquired and having the willingness to expose them and see them with objectivity and compassion. It's just nature. We also learned that with this new awareness, we can change and fix anything by giving and receiving good example to and from each other. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about how to transform any negative situation that shows up in our relationship into a deeper, higher level of connection.